So what better day to do a product review than a day like this? It is just straight nasty out. So nasty. So I figured today would be the best day that we could do a, a product review and I am reviewing one of my favorite Cape Cod Canal, favorite striper, favorite striped bass, favorite blue, favorite everything, favorite plug that I can think of, which is none other than the Magic Swimmer. to show you some beal, some hooks. Let's do this. All right, what is up? So today we are going to be talking about one of my favorite lures, and that is the Sabeel Magic Swimmer. So this is not a Sabeel. Um, first and foremost, this is the knockoff, right? So um, the first thing I want to say is that in no way am I promoting Seville or knockoff or anything like that. This is just a completely unbiased opinion. This is 100% just the lures that I like, the lures that I have success with. And if you go to the canal, you'll see that 95% of the people there that know what they're doing, they have a couple of these in their bag for a reason. So um, I just think that overall the Magic Swimmer is the number one striper lure uh, in Massachusetts, um, especially if you're fishing the Cape Cod Canal. So some people would probably argue with me on that, but this is just my opinion and the way that I like them. Um, this is the Magic Swimmer. The idea behind some of these is just that they naturally swim, right? So they have a complete natural movement. Um, <laughs> buy one throw it in the water and, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about I mean there's no other lure that really has this motion and bass are opportunistic right? I say it all the time they are opportunistic feeders so if you put an opportunity in front of them to feed they're gonna take it right um, and with this something about that movement they just cannot stand I mean I can tell you right now I want to eat it it's that it's that you know alluring um, just the way that this thing swims through the water the action on it is, is like none other. The cool thing with these is you really don't have to do much. You know, I see some guys, they pop them, they, they try to create some more action. You don't have to do any action whatsoever. These, they swim themselves, you know what I mean? So all you really have to do is just cast it out, right? And retrieve it in slow, right? That's the idea. Now, they definitely, they definitely throw like a shoe. Uh, for anyone that's ever thrown them, they absolutely are one of the worst lures in the world to throw. Um, they are so hard to actually get distance out there. That's why a good long rod, um, you know, with some backbone on it, is definitely going to help to to send these out to where the fish are. But no matter what, they're just hard to throw. These are the nine-inch Magic Swimmers, right? Uh, they are slow sinking. Um, and they definitely cast like a shoe. They weigh almost five ounces, right? So that's gonna bring me to my next point, and that is that you cannot throw these if you have braided line and you do not have some kind of finger protection, whether that's gloves, right, or like the little finger condoms, or 99% um, of the time I'm using just, you know, tape. Uh, I'll just tape it with like medical tape or something like that, like athletic medical tape. Um, but it, you cannot throw these without something on your finger if you're using braided line. Um, try it, try it once and then very quickly you're gonna learn. This thing is so heavy that it will cut your finger every single time. So just be safe, be smart. Sabeel is the originator of this lure. Sabeel is the ones that make this lure. They still make them. They came out with a, a new version this year. They're a great lure, right? I've thrown them. 
Um, don't get me wrong, I think that they, they definitely swim better than the knockoffs. And when I say swim better, I mean they swim consistently, right? Some of the knockoffs, they're knockoffs for a reason, right? Basically, they're a guy that's just got the molds and he's making them. Um, and he's making them for a fraction of the price, which is why I fish the knockoffs. I lose these things. They're heavy, right? A fish breaks them. A Seville is like $25 to $35, right? Back in the day when they first came out, they, these were $35 for an original Seville. Now, they've gotten their price point down to like 25 bucks, but still, 25 bucks. that means if I send four of them out in a season, that's $100 worth of lures. That just doesn't make any sense. I mean, I make my own lures. I make all my own plugs all my own pencil poppers and stuff like that for a reason is I'm trying to save money because I know that the fish, especially the fish stripers, you're gonna lose gear. It's just a fact. So the knockoffs, they come in right around, you know, anywhere from 12 to $15 with hooks. Um, on a, at a lot of the local tackle stores around Cape Cod, you'll find these, they're like anywhere from 12 to 15 bucks. Um, I'm going to personally post the link for the eBay account where you can get these for $8 a piece, right? So in my opinion, when they become, you know, a 25 to a $30 lure becomes eight, it, it, it's worth it. So I order a whole bunch of them. I mean, the, the, the ones that I primarily order will not have hooks. So you have to put hooks on them yourself and I'll talk about those in just a second. But first I wanna talk about colors. So with colors, 99% of the time, I'm throwing white as 99% of the guys will throw at the canal. You will see everybody driving up and down the, on their bikes with a, uh, with a Sabeel or a uh, knockoff and it's gonna typically be white, right? Don't get me wrong, white's a great color. Absolutely love it. It's probably my favorite color to throw, but when the mackerel are in, it's gonna be mackerel, right? So I'm gonna throw mackerel with the mackerel lines. They just can't stand it. And then I also throw a blue mac. A lot of the times, blue mac is definitely another great color to throw with these. Um, but any of the macro colors, when the macs are in the water, they just can't go get, you know, they can't resist them. But white is literally my favorite color for a reason. I mean, I have three of them right now. I have some more upstairs, but white is really gonna be my go-to. However, there is one other color that I will talk about that not many you won't see too many with it, um, in my opinion, because so many people buy either white or mackerel. But because I know that so many people are throwing white or mackerel at the canal, I throw it black and silver, right? Every single fish, every single bait fish that I ever see, they're, they're silver, right? Which is why people throw white. People throw white because they're trying to mimic everything. It mimics everything. Well, in my opinion, white doesn't mimic everything. I've never pulled up any, any fish and had it be completely white, but I have pulled up almost every bait fish and had it have silver on it. Black and silver by far is absolutely my favorite color um, to throw just because I know not many people are throwing this color. I cannot tell you how many times I've been to the canal and I look to my right and every single guy is throwing a white magic swimmer or they're throwing a white pencil popper or they're throwing mackerel. And then I look to my left and everybody's throwing white or mackerel pencil poppers or magic swimmers. And I'm just like, you know what? I, I don't like to go with the crowd. Very rarely do you catch me fishing in the crowd unless it's really, really on fire, but I really don't like to go with the crowd. So um, in on those days where everybody's kind of throwing the same thing, I'll break out a silver and I hook up. Right? And I truly believe that the fish aren't stupid. They don't get big for, you know, being stupid. You know, and I've also watched fish literally follow my, my magic swimmer in and then choose not to take it. So, like, I know that, you know, or I truly believe that they, they have, you know, they, they know what they're looking at. They know, you know, not to hit that, especially the bigger ones that have been hooked before. They know not to hit certain plugs. And now if they swim by, you know, 500 white magic swimmers, they know, you know, something's going on. Now, if all of a sudden they, they swim by and they catch that shimmer off of one, I think that combined with the action, bang, that causes a reaction strike. That causes the opportunity. So that's why a lot of times I'm gonna throw this black and silver magic swimmer. I just think that it's, you, you just can't go wrong with this. Um, they're harder to find. Um, when I find them, I buy a bunch of them, so good luck. But this is definitely one of my go-to colors. Um, if you wanted to, they're hard to find in the, in the knockoff In the real Sabils, they definitely have silver and shimmery colors. I think they're great. You know, those are, those are really my go-tos. Now, as far as hooks, right. And as far as hardware on these bad boys, 
your Magic Swimmers are standardly either going to come with no hooks, which means you're buying them online from the website that I'm going to show you, or they're going to come with three hooks, right? So they'll come with a hook, a hook, and then on the tail, they'll come with a hook. You do not need the tail hook, right? Again, anybody that's ever fished there, they know this, so it's repetitive, but you do not need the tail hook. There's no reason for it. It just causes problems. I'm going to talk in a minute about how this is the most dangerous lure, in my opinion, if you fish it with trebles. Um, but the tail hook just causes problems. A lot of the times the bass are going to come up and they're going to, they're going to hit it from underneath. This is going to get caused, you know, this is going to get hooked right in the, in the, either in the eye or in the cheek or in the back or, you know, this just causes problems. Um, and the more trebles you have, the more trouble you're getting in. So I take the back hook off as does anybody else that kind of knows what they're doing. Right. And you just need your two trebles that are coming underneath the belly here. So with that, this is going to be a fully out outrigged magic swimmer right this is basically what you're looking at right now i throw my split ring on the on the nose as well it gives it a little bit more action right then you're going to have your split ring split ring and then your hooks as far as hooks go I only throw VMC. I'm a VMC guy, right? Some guys, they throw other hooks, other brands. I just throw VMC. VMC 4 up, right, is what I'm going to throw. These hooks, don't get me wrong, they are reliable, but you need to keep an eye on them because they will rust out. They will bend and they will break, right? Some guys, they actually throw these, uh, the tuna grade um, trebles. So I've seen that. I haven't really tested it, but it's definitely not a bad idea. The only thing is that now you're starting to get in this, uh, a much higher price point. But these VMCs, they do the job. Um, you throw these on. The split rings that I use, the XH Roscoe split rings, 125 pound split rings, right? That is what I throw for these because I will have these actually bend out and they will break off on fish so i definitely throw a higher grade higher poundage split ring just to make sure that that doesn't happen what i can tell you right now is out of the box the real magic swimmers i don't care what upgrades they've made i don't care what it is realistically i do not throw a magic swimmer unless i have upgraded the hooks and upgraded this split rings you will never see me throw one outside of the out, right outside of the box just will not happen those black hooks that come with the the true original sabils they are garbage i honestly think they'd bend out on a largemouth bass in freshwater i have no idea why they they try to put those on um it, it just makes no sense. I upgrade every single one of them. So I upgrade every hook that goes on every lure. So it doesn't really matter to me um, what hooks come standard on there. But this is my rig and what, you know, a lot of the guys at the canal are going to be using. They upgrade the split rings. They upgrade the hooks. Now, one of the last things I kind of wanted to talk about, we talked about color. We talked about hooks and hardware. One of the last things I wanted to talk about before I kind of talk about how to fish these is safety. This is the, in my opinion, again, the most dangerous plug that you can throw at the canal. It's the best plug, in my opinion, again, that you can throw at the canal, but it is the most dangerous. You're talking about, first of all, I absolutely hate treble hooks. They are the worst, right? They're, they're dangerous just off the fact that there's three hooks on, on, one, <laughs> on one split ring, right? Then you times that by two, you've got six hooks, and then they'd have nine hooks, you know what I mean? So this thing is just dangerous. Then combined with the action, your danger level goes up, right? Um, I have hooked my thumb completely in and out, had to bend and break the barb and slip it back through. Magic swimmer. I have friends, I have buddies who have been hooked and had to go to the hospital and I'll ask them, what plug were you throwing? Magic swimmer. Um, I have had these things spit out of the, you know, bending the rod right at the rocks, had the, the fish spit the hook and bang, have a magic swimmer come flying at my head. These are the most dangerous lures in my opinion. Um, at least with, you know, at least with a pencil popper, right? You're going to have 
a hook and a hook, but you know, this isn't moving. So I think this is a little bit uh, safer than using the Magic Swimmer, right? Because just of that movement. Um, so I always use a boga, right? Always use like a fish grip, use something that can, you know, uh, grab the fish and then you can safely take these, take these out with pliers or however you want to do it. I am super, super careful if I have to take one of these off with my hands, um, just because I respect this lure, um, and you should too, for a reason. So if you respect this, then you really won't have a problem. If you don't respect it, then, you know, your hospital bills are going to start coming in. So, um, and I mean that in all seriousness is please, please, please respect respect this lure. Um, I just think it is the most dangerous. Also, when the fish is coming in and you're reeling them in and you've got that rod bent over, right? And that tension is coming right at your face, right? I've had nightmares about it and it finally happened to me the other day with another gentleman. He was, he was fishing, I was going to get the hook from him and he had it bent. I never bend the rod to my face. I always come off to the side, right? That way there, if he spits the hook, it's gonna go off to the side. In this particular case, the rod was bent in front I went to grab it for the gentleman and then bang, the hook popped and it flew directly. I mean, I could have felt the breeze of this thing. I've had people before where it's flown right at their face and they've made that, that last minute decision to, to swat it out of the way just from like that natural instinct and then bang, they're going to the hospital because they got six hooks in their hand. So please be careful when you're reeling that fish in, you get him to the edge and that rod is bent right? That fish 100% can spit the hook. It can rip the lips, rip the cheek, and then bang, this lure is coming because of the tension of the rod. That lure is coming right at your face. So please, please, please be careful with these. Always use the tension off to the side. That way there, if it spits, it, it's nowhere near you, your face, your hands, any of that stuff. Those are all things that if you practice it and respect it early on, then you never have to deal with it. But if you learn the hard way, you're gonna learn the hard way. It's not, it's not fun. So, um, that's pretty much everything that I I I could pro possibly go over with the Magic Swimmer. Um, the last thing I kind of wanted to talk about is just fishing these and how to fish them. Cool. So, I have one of my rods here. I'm not gonna open it or anything like that, but this can at least give you a little sense of how I like to fish um, the Magic Swimmer. Right, so the first thing is again, I've got tape on my finger. I cast this thing out, right? As soon as it hits the water, I, f I fish a baleless reel. So I don't have to worry about flipping the bale and losing that extra second. So the slack from the line, right? When I cast that out, that slack goes all the way out. Typically, if you're gonna flip the bale, you've gotta reel that slack in before you create tension and the lure starts coming back to you. I don't have to worry about that as much because I have the baleless reel. So as soon as that water hit, uh, sorry, as soon as that lure hits the water, bang, I flip it onto the bale and I can already start um, either retrieving the lure or retrieving the slack. So I have that extra second, which I personally, that's why I fish a $900 reel is because I want that extra second every single time the lure hits the water. It's all about presentation, and I feel like that can just create a, a little bit more of a presentation. So if you're fishing a baleless reel, the second that that lure hits the water, I, again, the whole idea, in my opinion, just my opinion, is you're creating an opportunity for an opportunistic fish to hit it. So as soon as that lure hits the water, I don't want any slack, and I give it a quick pump just one, right? This lure does all the work, it does all the, the action for you, but I give it one quick pump. When, that, when I give it that pump, what I'm looking for, what I'm trying to create, is that lure smacks the water, because it's so heavy, it smacks the water, and then all of a sudden, comes out of it, right? Or creates a swim. And what I'm looking for is I wanna create the opportunity, I wanna catch the fish's attention with the smack of the lure, but then right away, I want it to look as if like something hit it or it's just trying to get away. So I give it one pump. So the lure smacks and then pumps out. All of a sudden now that fish swims out of that wake or that splash. I, I have 100% gotten hits and landed fish from that pump. Right, and that's one thing that's just a, a, a an action or a style or a technique that I like. Nobody taught me that. 
it's just something that I like, and I have definitely caused reaction strikes because of that. So it's a cool thing to, to try. It's a little bit harder if you have a bail because you've got to flip it, reel it, and then and then pump it. At that point, I think you've already lost the opportunity to create that that opportunity out of the the splash. But if you can do it, then great. You know what I mean? Try it. It definitely works, especially if the, the fish are there and they're they're really honed in and keyed in on, on, on bait fish. So cast it out. Either way, if you don't have that, you cast it out, it hits the water, re retrieve the slack in, right? Now, every other lure, for the most part, I fish the rod in between my legs, right? And I'm fishing here, right? Or here, right? I want that rod tip up right and creating as much action as possible and being able to feel the lure right whether i'm jigging if i'm using a pencil popper darters um bottleneck swimmer any of that stuff i am going to have that rod tip up this and maybe the the stick shad and i'll, I'll probably do a separate video on that but this is the only lure that i really fish with the rod tip down right so my rod tip is down i Fish it with the rod under my armpit, just like this, tight in. So I cast it, cast right out, and then immediately I'm here, right? Typically for me, I'll cast it, it hits the water, I give it a quick pump, and then I put it right underneath my armpit, rod tip down. The reason why is I want that that line, right, causing that the, the nose of the lure to be able to swim and give it a little bit more action as it swims through the water. And now if I'm up top with it, it's trying to be pulled up to the surface and it's swimming like this on the surface, not nearly as much action. If it's like this, it just gain, it just swims so much better. And I see, see, I do see people, they'll fish it with, you know what I mean, the rod tip up. I just think that that's a mistake. Fish it with the rod tip down, underneath the armpit. Fish, 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 fish. Now, my retrieve speed is slow, slow, slow. There are so many guys that I watch, right? And they will cast this thing out and they retrieve it as fast as possible. Well, a fish that goes like this, you know what I mean? He's going like this through the water. That's, that doesn't, you're not, the presentation is terrible, right? I'll catch more fish, keep fishing that way. But if you fish it slow, now you're allowing that plug to do what it wants to do, right? So now you're allowing that plug to swim back and forth nice and slow. Let the current, let the plug do the work. If you're reeling fast, he's just going like this. There, no, no good sized bass, no smart bass is going to look at that and say, oh, well, that looks like a fish that I've seen. I'm going to hit that. No. But if he's going nice and slow and that current is working and your rod is, your retrieve speed is nice and slow, he can work and it creates an opportunity that the fish cannot resist. So I cast it out, it's under my armpit and I'm reeling slow. I mean, very, very, very slow. And I allow that lure to work. As it catches the current, I'll reel maybe a little bit slower, right? Now the current's doing the work for me. If I'm casting up current, right, and I'm casting and now the lure is coming down, I'll reel faster, right? Because now the current is working against me, right? It's bringing my lure down the canal, right? I have to create the, the, the action. So I'll reel faster if the current's coming at me, 100%, reel much, much faster. If I'm reeling and the current's coming this way though, and that, that plug has to fight the current, way, way, way slower. That way there, the lure can do its job, right? You will not get as many casts at the, as the guy on the left and the right as you, right? Yeah, they'll cast 10 times more than you, but I guarantee you'll get more fish because your lure looks so much better in the water. Um, so just fish it slow, really, really, really slow. Other than that, there's nothing else I could tell you. Cast, retrieve, cast, retrieve, cast retrieve the lure does the work you do not have to overfish this lure it does the work for you so allow it to work for you right this is why it's one of my favorite lures is all you have to do is cast and retrieve it is probably the first lure i will tell people to try right or the first lure i will tell people to get is because this thing just does all of the work for you right you do not have to go crazy pump try it do whatever you want i'm not saying that you have to do it my way but you don't have to be popping this thing or jerking it or, you know, doing anything as far as that. Let it do the work for you. Just let it swim. And I guarantee all of a sudden, bang, you're going to get smashed, which is going to lead to my last point, which is going to be the hook set on these things. 
in my opinion, one of my favorite hook sets. It's just a weird hook set. It's not where it, it doesn't come up. It doesn't, it's not an automatic pump. It just all of a sudden it feels like you get weeds. Like you get, you get st stuck on weeds is the best way that I like to describe it is all of a sudden it feels like the lure just stops working and that's a fish as soon as you feel that that tension like you got stuck on weeds that thing's swimming in a high wall at water column right you're not getting stuck on weeds that's a fish he's hitting it and as soon as he hits it I am raising this right hand so I will raise this up and away so up and away all right make sure my drag set but Fishing, fishing, fishing. All of a sudden he hits it. Feels like I catch weeds and I am ripping it up and away. So it's almost, let's say, 11 o'clock, right? 10, 11 o'clock is where I want to rip this and just rip it straight up. Now, if I'm fishing this way, right, and, and my lure is down here, same exact thing, just opposite. I will rip it up and away. So two o'clock, right? Boom, one, two o'clock, rip it up and away and I start cat and I start my retrieve. Once I have that retrieve and I've got that tension, right, that's when I'm going to switch it right to here, right to my right to my my groin, I guess you will, right to my hip. That's right where I want to put it. So it's going to come from my armpit on the hit, right, right into here, and then I'm going to retrieve him back in, right. But that's really all you have to do is once you get hit, just boom, give it one good rip, and then transfer it into your hip, right. And that's that's realistically all you have to do for the hook set is just rip it the other way you don't have to be doing any kind of like crazy hook sets or anything like that or ripping straight up nothing right it's just a, a gradual good solid hook right to two or good solid hook right to 10 11 o'clock that's right where you want to do it and again if you're fishing it low right and that rod tip is low that 10 o'clock just bringing it up to 10 11 if you don't have any slack which you shouldn't right that's going to be enough of a hook set. Him taking it, right, you having no slack, and then ripping it up to 10, 11 o'clock, letting the rod bend, that's enough of a hook set. And you're going to be A-OK. -okay. You'll be fine with that. Transfer to your groin or your hip, and then bang, reel him right in. Right When he comes in, again, that's where I want to bend it away from my face. Right, So I'm going to bend the rod away from my face right versus sometimes right i used to and i see people do it all the time they'll have it right here the rod will be bent and the fish will be right here now all of a sudden if he spits that guess where that lure is going right in my face so i rip it and i have it bent this way just like this the fish comes in right i grab my boga off and i and i'm able to lip the fish just like that right now if he spits it that lure goes that way and you don't ever have to worry about it all right guys so that is pretty much it for me when it comes to uh, fishing the magic swimmers, right? Like I said, colors, um, the hardware, how to fish them, right? How to retrieve them, how to hook set them, and then also how to be safe with these, right? These are my favorite lure and a lot of guys' favorite lures. You will see guys that have these on their bikes. I have, I have freaking six of them right here, right? So, I mean, I absolutely love these things. Um, they're just they just work right so if you were going to start with any lure um that you want to catch a striper with at the canal i would 100 percent say the magic swimmer knockoffs they sell out fast right so make sure you get them early in the season and stock up you will lose them right um I'm going to post that link to the website below um, to the eBay account that, that sells them for eight bucks a piece. They do not come with hooks, so you'll have to buy the hardware. I'll link to that. Uh, you'll have to buy the hooks. I'll link to that. Um, and then from there, that's really it. Just be safe with them um, and have fun. They are my favorite lure for a reason. They just flat out catch fish. Um, so with that being said, guys, I'm Jasper Kutu. Today we went over Magic Swimmers. Uh, I hope that you guys like this video, share this video, comment on this video. And if you really like my stuff, please feel free to subscribe. I would absolutely love it. And uh, stay fishing. This is the Magic Swimmer review. What are you doing?